So all pervading personality of consciousness are my respectful obeisance to you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestation. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being, by him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. as one is bewildered by the illusory representation of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna who is eternally existent in a transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravotra paramo nirmat saranam satam vedyam vastavam atravastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulu Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Kite Kimva Purir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Aburutite Tra Kite Bihi Susu Subis Dakshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold misery. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavad, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam palam sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam ibata bhagavatam rasam alayam Muhur aho raska buvi bhavakaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Kirdiyam Taksto Iabhadrani 
we do not see to hear about Krishna from Vedic literature or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend, and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu abadesu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati utamasoke bhaktir bhaviti naistaki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava kama loba dayas chaye cheta etara navidam sitvam sadve prasiddhati By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat tattva vigyanam Mukta sangha sijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chityante sarvasamsaya siyante chasikarmani vista evatmaniswari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 39. <clears throat> Madurayam Tatavajram Shura Sena Patim Tata Prajapatyam Niru Yestim Agnin Apibad Ishwara. Thus, translation, thus he posted, then he posted Vajra, the son of Aniruddha, grandson of Lord Krishna at Mathura as the king of Shura Sena. Afterwards, Maharaj Yudhisthira performed a Prajapatya sacrifice and placed in himself the fire for quitting household life. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj Yudhisthira, after placing Maharaj Parikshit on the imperial throne of Hastinapur, and after posting Vajra, the great grandson of Lord Krishna, as the king of Mathura, accepted the renounced order of life. The system of four orders of life and forecasts in terms of quality and work, known as Varnasrama Dharma, is the beginning of real human life. And Maharaj Yudhisthira, as the protector, of this system of human activities, timely retired from active life as sannyasi, handing over the charge of administration to a trained prince, Maharaj Pariksit. The scientific system of Anasram Dharma divides the human life 
in four divisions of occupation and four orders of life. The four orders of life as brahmacharya, grihastha, vanaprastha, and sannyasi are to be followed by all, irrespective of the occupational division. Modern politicians do not wish to retire from active life, even if they are old enough. But Yudhisthira Maharaj, as an ideal king, voluntarily retired from active administrative, administrative life to prepare himself for the next life. Everyone's life must be so arranged that the last stage of life, say at least the last 15 to 20 years prior to death, can be absolutely devoted to the devotional service of the Lord to attain the highest perfection of life. It really is foolishness to engage oneself all the days of one's life in material enjoyment and fruit of activities, because as long as the mind remains absorbed in fruit of work for material enjoyment, there is no chance of getting out from conditional life or material bondage. No one should follow the suicidal policy of neglecting one's supreme task of obtaining, attaining the highest perfection of life, namely going back home, back to Godhead. So the uh, wisdom of... Uh, winding down all material activities and preoccupations and occupational duties and giving oneself 15 or 20 years of total immersion in Krishna consciousness without having to worry about maintenance, family, all these things. That is, once all the family obligations have been properly uh, taken care of. One cannot just leave abruptly. Of course, Lord Chaitanya did leave abruptly when he was 24 years old, but that was uh, different circumstances. But for the general population, uh, of which we are part of, we should follow the example of Maharaj Yudhisthira. <clears throat> so this is called Varnasram Dharma. Now, there's a very interesting point here that uh, Prabhupada says, the four orders of life as Brahmacharya, Grihastavana, Prasta, and Sannyasi are to be followed by all, irrespective of the occupational division. Huh. But this is really interesting. This proves that the ashrama part of Varnashrama will eliminate any perceived inequalities that one might perceive, incorrectly of course, but one might perceive in the Varna section. Uh, because, you know, you say, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaisha, Sudra. Well, Sudra is considered the lowest class, the worker class. And they're supposed to serve the other three classes, which are considered the higher class. But that does not preclude someone, let's say, who was born a sudra, to go through the ashrama uh, orders and attain the highest position, such as sannyasi, and then go beyond that and become a pure devotee. There's no rule that says sudras can't do this. However, in previous ages, there may have been, but today, in the Kali Yuga, there isn't, because everyone's born a sudra in Kali Yuga. The strict adherence to samskars, especially Garbhadhan samskar, is not prevalent today, unfortunately, and therefore, uh, everyone is born, or just about everyone is born sudra in Kali Yuga. However, that doesn't preclude anyone from achieving the highest position in the Varnasram system, which is sannyas, and going even higher than that in becoming a pure devotee of Krishna. <clears throat> so, 
Maharaj Yudhisthira being an ideal king, an ideal leader, he demonstrated uh, what a real politician should do. They should retire in a timely way, prepare themselves to go back to Godhead. But of course, today's politicians, they, 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 they die with their boots on, as they say. The, the famous saying in English, dying with your boots on, it's usually applied to soldiers who uh, are not afraid to fight. And, and of course, whenever there's a fight with missiles and all kinds of weapons, people are going to die. So usually they die with their boots on right in the uh, thick of, uh, of uh, warfare. <clears throat> but that should not be the case for uh, politicians and others, but it, unfortunately it is. They wait thinking that they're never going to die, and they die. For them it's a great surprise uh, that they die anyway. Uh, without ever making any preparation for death. Okay, so this Vedic way of life, this is, the, this is the best way to organize society, and Prabhupada wanted this. Uh, surprisingly, near the end of Prabhupada's transcendental pastimes, he said, 50% well, of my work is done, and the other 50% now is Varnashram Dharma. Well, that was a shocking <laughs> statement. But actually, in ISKCON, uh, Prabhupada established the Varnas, uh, even though Vaishnavas theoretically are transcendental to such identifications. Uh, this was the understanding uh, of uh, Vaishnavas, and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur turned it upside down, or he, he, he shocked them by uh, taking sannyas himself. Vaishnavas thought they were above the varnas and the ashramas, but uh, by, by believing that, they became degraded and were doing all kinds of nonsense on the plea that they're transcendental. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, seeing this, he took sannyas by looking at the picture of his guru, Gurkhsura Babaji. And this was severely criticized by the caste Brahmins. They thought this was a sacrilegious act. And then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also uh, did other things that, that completely uh, made them upset. He uh, one time he drove into Rindavan in, a, in a, like an opulent American car. <laughs> or it's, I don't know if it was American, but it was an opulent car. And this was like a, anathema for the uh, traditionalists who were deviating it anyway. Because uh, normally a sannyasi is supposed to walk barefoot. And here comes Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur with his thunder in the in a convertible, beautiful car, driving into Vrindavan. When I first went to Vrindavan in I think 1973, might have been 72, 72 or 73, there were hardly any cars in Vrindavan, all tangas and, and rickshaws, very few cars. Today, of course, it's... Uh, full of cars. But imagine in the 1930s, driving into Vrindavan in an opulent car. That's a convertible. <laughs> it was like beyond anybody's imagination. <laughs> but uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was, was showing people that, look, anything can be used, that, that can be used in Krishna's service should be used. And renouncing it is, is uh, incomplete renunciation or false renunciation. Uh, yeah, there, was a, there was also a belief that sannyasis should never go outside of India. Of course, Pakistan started of course, sent some of his devotees outside of India to preach Krishna consciousness. And of course, Prabhupada was a globetrotter. He went around the world. 
14 times to spread Krishna consciousness. So, therefore, uh, Prabhupada says, it is really foolishness to engage oneself all the days of one's life in material enjoyment and fruitive activities, because as long as the mind remains absorbed in fruitive work for material enjoyment, there is no chance of getting out from the conditioned life or material bondage. That word no chance means what it says, no chance. Uh, our mind remaining absorbed in fruitive work for material enjoyment precludes any possibility of getting out of the material world, especially in the latter part of our life. So our, our whole life sh uh, should be molded uh, to uh, attain freedom from the influence of the modes of material nature and ultimately from the cycle of birth and death so that one can go back to Godhead. Prabhupada says, no one should follow the suicidal policy of neglecting one's supreme task of attaining the highest perfection of life, namely going back home back to Godhead. So suicidal, he's saying, do that. Okay, so uh, also uh, some days ago, I promised that I would explain uh, what's called Nitya and Nimitic avatars. Uh, so this is an interesting uh, issue. And uh, Prabhupada answers this in a correspondence that he wrote letter to a devotee named Ekayani, a, uh, a, a female disciple, in July 25th, 1970. He says, regarding your questions, the first answer is that it is correct that the body transcendental of Krishna and Krishna himself are non-different. So what is the difficulty to understand that the soul of Agasura merged into the body of Krishna? In other words, Krishna benedicts the demons who he kills personally with the impersonal liberation of merging with him. So there's two types of merging, merging in the Brahma Jyoti and merging into the body of Krishna. There's a difference between the activities of Krishna which are exhibited to the perception of the conditioned souls in this world and his activities in Goloka Vrindavana. Because Krishna was playing, as an ordinary human being, his activities appear just like ordinary human activities. But in the spiritual sky, there's no such requirement. There, in the spiritual sky, Krishna has his activities also, but they cannot be understood by the conditioned living entities, how they are going on without any resemblance of the mechanical workings of things in this material world. That's a very important statement. In the spiritual sky and in the material sky also, there is no question of separation from Krishna. Krishna is all-pervading. So where can one be out of his presence? Whatever has to do with Krishna is on the spiritual platform, and on that spiritual platform there is no difference between being together and being apart from Krishna. So even in the feeling of being separated from Krishna, Krishna is there. So far, the avatars are concerned. There are two types. One is called Nitya, and the other is called Naimitic. Nitya means eternal and Naimitic avatars appear for some specific function in the material world. Nitya avatars have their eternal abodes in the spiritual sky from which they may sometimes descend to the material world, but Nimitic avatars are expansions of the Nitya avatars for some timely purpose. So the non-human form of avatars do not have their planets in the spiritual sky. So therefore, all the non-human forms are Nimitic. And the Nimitic avatars are expansions of the Nietzsche avatars. Yes, Mahesh Dhamma is in the spiritual sky that is described in Srimad Bhagavatam and Brahma Sumita. Okay, so that explains Nitya and Naimitic. 
But uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila 165 to 66, uh, more information is given. And it says, there are three categories of incarnations of Godhead. Partial incarnations, qualitative incarnations, and empowered incarnations. The Purushas and Matya are examples of partial incarnations. And then, uh, next verse, it says, It says, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva are qualitative incarnations. Empowered incarnations are those like Kumaras, King Prithu, Mahamuni Vyasa, the compiler of the Vedas. Okay, so you have three types of incarnations. Partial, qualitative, and empowered. And the Purushas and Matsya are examples of partial incarnations. Okay, so this is a big subject. Uh, I'll continue a little bit more, and then we'll stop, and I'll continue in, uh, uh, tomorrow also. The person, uh, text uh, 68, the, uh, this is the first, uh, it's the Adi Lila, first chapter, verses uh, 65, and now we're on, on 68. The personality of Godhead ex exhibits himself in two kinds of forms, prakasa and vilasa. The Supreme Lord expands his personal form in two primary categories, the prakasa forms manifested by Lord Krishna for his pastimes, and their features are exactly like his. When Lord Krishna married 16,000 queens in Dwarka, he did so in 16,000 prakasa expansions. Similarly, during the Rasa dance, he expanded himself in identical Prakasa forms to dance beside each and every gopi simultaneously. When the Lord manifests his Vilasa expansions, however, they are somewhat different in their bodily features. Lord Balaram is the first Vilasa expansion of Lord Krishna, and the four handed Narayana in Vaikuntha expand and the four-handed four Narayana forms in Vaikuntha expand from Balaram. There is no difference between the bodily forms of Sri Krishna and Balaram except that their bodily colors are different. Similarly, Sri Narayana in Vaikuntha has four hands, whereas Krishna has only two. The expansions of the Lord who manifest such bodily differences are known as Vilasa Vigrahas. So we have Prakasa, exactly identical expansion of Krishna, and Vilasa, slightly different expansion of the Lord, although he still retains his full powers. Okay, so we'll stop right there, and we'll continue some more tomorrow. Are there any questions? We have two types of avatars, Nitya, who are eternal and have their eternal abode in the spiritual world, and the Nimitic, who are expansions of the eternal avatars in the material world, who, who uh, appear for uh, a certain time for a certain purpose. And they, so therefore, they don't have eternal planets in the spiritual world. Any questions? The, usually the animals, usually the animal forms are nimitic. They appear for a certain time, yeah. We'll go. I'll have more information tomorrow. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Right.
Yes, I think so, yeah. I'll confirm it tomorrow. <laughs> well, you have you have the animal forms. So that's what he says. Let's let's look at this. He says Uh, one is called Nitya and the other is called Naimitic. Nitya means eternal and Naimitic avatars appear for some specific function in material worlds. Nitya avatars have their eternal abodes in the spiritual sky from which they may sometimes descend to the material world. But Naimitic avatars are expansions of Nitya avatars for some timely purpose. So the non-human forms of avatars do not have their planets in the spiritual sky. That means should she's not a, she doesn't she's not a, a non-human form. Yet. Yeah. I'll know for sure tomorrow. I, I didn't have time to look it up. Yeah. But she, I don't know, does she have a planet in the spiritual world? No. Okay. We'll stop right there. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Kijay.